So when customers come into this store, I generally have stock jokes ready to go to just kind of break the ice, just kind of depending on what they're coming in for and what kind of mood I am in. So sometimes I will I will refer to I will they'll ask me like how are you doing and I say yeah well I'm stuck at work on the weekend but you know other than that I'm fine and they'll chuckle out of it but and some of them will actually tell me well. You know, you work in a toy store, so you know, it can't be all that bad. You know, and, you know, for the mer for the most part, yeah, they're right. This is a fun job. I really enjoy being here. I, you know, a friend of I, I joked about it to a friend of mine like, if my YouTube channel made what you think it makes, I would not be working my day job. And he, he immediately spouts up like, uh, "No, I've seen how happy you are at that store. You're lying." And you're like, okay, guilty. Guilty. I, I love my job, and I am fortunate for that. It's not all sunshine and roses, though. There, there are downsides to this job. There are things that I don't necessarily enjoy doing. I, there are things that come with the territory that are just, for one reason or another, really uncomfortable, but it's kind of necessary for the job, you know, and there's a few examples of that. Um, lately, we've been getting a lot of people asking, do we buy Pokemon cards? Okay, well, we don't do that. It's a volatile market. We don't really have the space for like laying out like a bunch of uh, individual cards. Uh, so it's, it's not really a market that me or the owner is interested in getting into. But every time I get someone asking me that, and I've literally had days where it's like five, six people ask me, I'm realizing that it's a lot of people who realized that all the money they spent for over the last two years on the Pokemon card craze was all for naught because they got caught up in a hype train. They got caught up in the hysteria and the excitement of it and like just trying to get this next pack I know is going to have that $500 Pikachu, that $400 Charizard. You know, it's all, it's like, it's like scratch off tickets. Like you just keep going, getting more because you know, the you know, is you know, the winning ticket was the one I didn't buy. So let's keep scratching away. And the Pokemon cards were the same way. So every time I get one of these people asking me, like, I'm, you know, like, do you buy Pokemon cards? It makes me realize how many people are now regretting that decision and they're out a lot of money and they're just trying to recoup it and you know i wish we could help them out but this is not a shop that can handle that kind of business i refer them to a shop it's out of the way but there is a shop in southwest florida that does take individual cars i always send them up there so you know it, it's the best that we can do personally but it is a reminder it's just a lot of people who just got caught up and lost a lot of money. And I'm reminded of that every single time. It's not the most comfortable thought. The real problem is in the stuff that is attached to celebrity. Um, that There's another big dark side to this. When you look around, you realize how much is valuable because of the actor or the artist or whoever that is attached to this particular toy of some kind. Uh, I got that feeling when Chadwick Boseman passed away. Here at the shop, we had his helmet from Black Panther, and all I could think of was like, oh God, please don't let anyone say that like we're scalping that because he passed away. Uh, that did not happen. Uh, we were charging what the toy went for at the time. We didn't raise the price after he passed away. And yeah, that helmet did sell. Of course it sold. But I have to be cognitive of these things. I have to be cognitive of current event things and what's going on with certain celebrities, people of interest, that is going to affect some of the things that we have. You know, We have a Funko Pop autographed by Charlie Sheen. And in the back of my head, I have to remember that the man does have HIV. His health is not good. 
And at some point that will catch up to him. And that autograph in there is going to go up in value. And I have to keep that in mind. It's not a comfortable thing to think about, but it is part of this business to know what it's going to be worth and to expect it to increase should the worst happen. You know, it's a terrible thing to happen to anyone. I don't care what you think of the guy, what kind of trouble he's been in, whatever. It's an excruciating experience no one should have to go through. You know, and I'm, I'm not saying, you know, not, you know, not, like that part of it is just super ugly. Uh, right now, I have this thing. This is a Chase Funko Pop of Vincent Kennedy McMahon, which is currently at the $60 price point that we put it at a few months ago when we first took it in. You know what's going on with Vince McMahon right now? Vince is in a lot of trouble with a lot of hush money. Uh, so I don't know what the fate of this is going to be. You know, this could be either worthless or priceless because I guarantee you this, whatever the outcome, whatever happens, this is going to be his last Funko Pop. They're not going to make another Vince McMahon. They're not going to do like some... Oh, him in his wrestling gear or, you know, Vince McMahon with like, like, uh, like a pile of money or like sitting behind like, like that famous photo of Vince at his desk with his act with his like actual genuine Tyrannosaurus fossil behind him. Like they're never going to make anything like that. Vince is done. Vince is done. No more action figures. No more Funko Pops. Once you get caught doing what he did you can just sell you can tell like i'm really disgusted by what he did because i'm not describing it you can google it it's not hard to find but now i'm on i'm eyeballing this and i think is this going to drop in value as everyone is disgusted with him or is it going to go up in value as his loyalists try to buy up each and every one while they still can i don't know so i have to watch the market i have to bank on this man's misfortunes and the terrible things that he did to other people, his victims are going to affect the price of this and are going to affect how much money I can make as a business person. It's not a comfortable part of it. Now on a similar note, I have this as well. as an autograph by Hacksaw Jim Duggan. He signed this for us when he was in town for a convention a few months ago. Two days after we got this signed by him at the show, he went in for emergency surgery. And it wasn't long after that before we found out that he actually had prostate cancer. So we put it on the shelf to basically show off, but we have never put a price on it because we felt that would be in poor taste. I felt like it would be in poor taste because it would feel like I'm capitalizing off the man's misfortune. He overcame that uh, cancer, but uh, it did return. It did uh, come back. He's in treatment for it now. So again, no price tag on this. But I do have to be aware. You know, this was like, this is like the last convention he went to before all of this happened, and I don't think he returned to his convention touring in between uh, his treatments. I think he was still in recovery. So this, this may be one of the last autographs he gets to do, even if he comes through this as, again, because he's already beaten cancer twice. The man is tough as nails. You know, but even if he comes through it, he might not have the strength to, to fly around the country to go and sign autographs anymore. So this might be one of the last ones he ever does one way or another. And again, elements that I have to be aware of. It's a cool thing to have, but it's not the most comfortable thing to have. So um, I really don't know what to do with it. Uh, we basically have it out right now as just a, a show-off piece. Hey, look at what we got. Um, I mean, it's something that I may not even take money for. That might be one of those things that, and there's a few things in the shop like that, where I'm not interested in money. I would take a trade for it. You know, if someone wants to trade me something important that they own, because that is important to them personally, you know, I am I am open for that, you know, because I know at least then I'm not really making money off of it and it's going to someplace that really, really wants it. It's going to take care of it and really treasure it. That's, 
what something like that is for. So I think that's what it's going to be because that makes me, it, it makes me feel cleaner. You know, it, it makes me feel a lot cleaner than just like stamping a price tag on it. Cause that's just, no, oh, you know, this, uh, this guy is going through cancer treatment and to bump it up at 20, 20, 30 bucks. Not who I like to be, not the way I like to run this store. Today brought up an interesting situation. And it's the kind of situation that I have heard about, but I've never had the opportunity to. <sighs> I, okay, okay, I was going to use phrasing that's really bad. Not intentionally. I stopped myself. Uh, let's say I've never in, been involved in this situation. But we had someone call the shop today because a relative had passed away. And when they went to clear out their house, they have this large unopened toy collection that they had no idea what to do with. You know, it's not, it's not in their realm whatsoever. They don't know what it is, how valuable it is, how to sell it off. They called to one shop that ironically, we uh, actually send people to for loose Pokemon cards. So they sent them to us. That's, you know, and I handled that phone call today and there is a businessman in me that realizes what an opportunity that is because it is a family that doesn't know what it is or how to get rid of it. All they know is that they want to get rid of it. Um, you know, they need to move it along, you know? So it's the kind of thing that would be dirt cheap inventory for the shop. And at the end of the day, I got to think about how the shop can benefit and how the shop can continue to thrive. And this is the kind of opportunity that, lets us get a hold of pr rare product that we may otherwise never get the chance to get and at a price where we can take in a lot of it. But it's so cold. <laughs> it's so cold when you view it from that mindset because you're viewing, you're viewing death in dollars and cents, which is not right. And it's not really how I view it. There is that businessman that realizes that Oh, that's a golden opportunity, but there's more to it than that. There is humanity to it because it's a terrible thing. You know, when you, when you lose someone in your life and you have to go and clear things out of their house, you have to do it. You have to move on. Life has to continue, but it is like removing the last vestiges of what they left behind. You know, it's, it's like you're dismantling the last of who they were on this earth. That's really uncomfortable. You know, when my grandmother passed away, you know, it took us almost a year to come to terms with getting rid of a lot of her stuff, you know? It's an extremely uncomfortable process. It's a lot of reminders of who they were and like, you know, it's it's a very sad thing to go through. And I keep that in mind as they are going through all this stuff, you know, you know, they are looking for a way of healing. You know, it's not it's about like we got to get this stuff out because we've got to sell the house or we got to rent the room or whatever the situation is. You know, it is their way of moving on and getting the reminders out of their life so that they can process the grief, you know, all this grieving. So there is there is a there is that businessman, but there is also that person that realizes this is part of the healing process. This is something that they need to do that we can help with. We're the only place in town they can really take it to. So, you know, when they're ready, you know, we're going to take a look. We're going to see what we can do. We're not going to take advantage of them. We're going to give them a fair price, just like we try to give everyone a fair price for, on our offers. So at the very least, at the end of the day, they can walk out with some money, pay for the expenses that they've incurred through all of this, and they can move on. You know, and it's a problem that can be solved. I have to view what we do as solving problems because a lot of the stuff we take in, someone had to move, there's a baby on the way, there's a divorce, you know, there's a lot of uncomfortable situations that a shop like this, uh, people on the outside will go, well, you're taking advantage of these people, but it's really not how it works. 
is really not that way. You know, there is not this blind businessman who just sees the dollars and numbers. I see the human beings that are trying to put these out. I see the person who just needs to pay for gas and food that week. I see the person who just needs a little bit of extra money so they can pay that month's rent. And there is that part of me that's like, I'm only supposed to give this much for what you are offering, but you really, I can afford to give more. And generally, that's ends up what I do. Because as long as we can still make the money off of it, then I'm not really concerned about how much it takes to get it in. I kind of am. I kind of am. Of course I am. But I try to be as fair as I can. You know, and even in a dark situation, that's what I try to do. And that's what we are going to do should we uh, have that opportunity. But like I said... There are dark sides to the toy business. There are things that are uncomfortable that you have to be aware of, that you have to focus and pay attention on. And it's not comfortable, but it's necessary. Now, in a game, in a, in a, in, you know, in a, in, you know, like in this game of toy marketing and reselling, in this business that everyone thinks is all fun and games, and like, well, you're playing with toys all day. How bad can it be? There is bad. You know, there is, there is a dark side to it, you know, and there are times where, you know, the businessman brain has to be the one making a call here, even if the person behind that brain is not comfortable with it and not happy about it. But you just try to be as fair as you can, and you try to remember you're solving somebody's problem for them. You know, and to them, that's worth a lot more than we could ever give in money, is to fix the problem they need help with. So that's the way you got to view it, and just hope that, hope that you've done enough. Hope that it helps out enough. And that's the Toy Store Life. Guys, I am facing the most powerful enemy any YouTuber can face, the algorithm, and I need your help to defeat him. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. Every time you do, we attack that algorithm and we drive it back until it can no longer defeat this channel. Thank you very much.